Hello everybody. Today we're going to be talking about rub routes. So what is a rub route? Uh, pretty much kind of like a pick in basketball. Um, two or more routes, and usually it's going to be two. That's all we're going to work with today. I think there maybe is one of three. Where the players are going to run right next to each other on the same team, almost rubbing up next to each other as they cross. And what this is meant to do is to kind of stop the defender. They have to go around the two receivers or underneath them. And it's going to create natural separation for everybody. Uh, at the same time, maybe even cause confusion, and maybe two guys follow one receiver, um, leaving one wide open. Uh, today against the Eagles on the goal line, the Lions use this play here. A little sprint out to the left by Stafford, and we have a rub route on the left side with Bolden coming underneath uh, a slant route by Marvin to create a nat natural pick. So here we go right into the play. Um, for unfortunately, the Eagles do a good job of picking up, and they end up switching their man off, and they get this one covered, as well as the safety sliding underneath the intended out route. But Stafford does a good job of not panicking, resetting his feet, noticing nobody's really coming after him, and finding Marvin Jones in the back of the end zone. So we're going to highlight here, uh, like I said, Anquan Bolden's just going to take a step forward, and then he's going to cut hard out towards the sideline. And that's going to, you know... it. If done correctly, uh, the the two defenders are going to get mixed up and which you know who they're supposed to defend. So let's go ahead and peek at it one more time, real quick. Out by Bolden, they're looking to get the ball into him. He's a big-bodied guy, a lot of strength. Um, now, in case this play didn't look familiar enough, this is actually one of the touchdowns uh, two weeks ago that the Lions uh, had against the Packers. And same thing, except this one's going towards the right here. And we'll get right into this play as well. Same concept. You have Bolden and Marvin down at the bottom of the screen. Anquan's going to do a job of just beating his press and getting outside. And not much a defender can do. Now, the importance of the sprint out here is this is a pretty hard throw. Um, if this throw gets undercut, there's not a chance anybody's catching this cornerback. So by sprinting out, um, you're kind of forcing that defender to, to really make a good play on the throw. And it just makes this throw naturally easier for Stafford. Uh, just a better angle. And we'll look at it one more time here as Stafford's just kind of directing everything. This this Green Bay defense gives a ton of looks. They're very smart, very well coached. So it takes a lot to really be successful against them. Um, our next example is actually uh, going to be against the Green Bay Packers as well. It's actually earlier in the game. And we will get right into that right after this play. So pretty much what we have on uh, the... The next play is going to be a slant with a wheel coming underneath. Golden Tate's going to look like he's doing the same exact route as uh, Anquan, but he's actually going to curl up the left sideline, and Stafford's going to find him between the, between the cornerback and the safety. Marvin does a good job at really selling that, that slant and really picking off his man, and you'll see here at the bottom of the screen is Marvin's face and press. Does a good job of getting off of his jam and getting right into the wave to the defender. And that's the bad part about playing uh, man or zone and press, is you really can't see what's going on around you. It's just you in front of your guy, and you may have eyes on the quarterback just to, to make sure it's you know it, it's a pass play as opposed to a run. But you're really not seeing that slant. He, he just doesn't see it, so we'll, we'll pop right back into it here. You can see the guy doesn't see Jones coming in on the slant at all. Uh, it's important here for Jones to make sure that he doesn't initiate contact and he doesn't put his hands out as if he's blocking. That that actually classifies as offensive pass interference. So sliding into the next play, this is the big play at the end of the game uh, yesterday against the Eagles. Um, you got a bunch formation here to the right. Andre's gonna Andre Roberts number nineteen is gonna run a quick hitch and Anquan Bolden's gonna shoot vertical. And that's gonna allow Golden Tate on the very outside to kind of slip underneath them. And then get behind the linebackers and make a huge play at the end of the fourth quarter to put the Lions in position to win this game. Um, once again, th this one, this is a bunch formation. Uh, really, really executed well. Now Stafford almost gets caught because they do bring pressure from the edge. But the big thing here is making sure that you don't get caught up in the jam traffic. These passes have to come out extremely fast. Um, on time. Now this one came a little late, granted, but he does a good job at slipping behind the linebackers. But big part here is within this five yards, there's a lot of contact. So we're going to see Anquan from the inside. He's going to shoot vertical, and Roberts does a good job at using his his man pressing him almost as a shield to help uh, Golden take it to the second level. 
And we'll just view this one more time. Excellent throw here. So if you're wondering, how do you stop a play like this? And the big thing for stopping this kind of play is the cornerback needs to beat beat the man to the spot is what we call it. And whenever you see a quick crossing route, as a corner, you're kind of taught that you, you want to jump in front of those routes. Um, you want the quarterback to think he's got it and throw it. And you can look right at the Super Bowl between the Seahawks and uh, the New England Patriots where they do run a rub route combo. Malcolm Butler jumps in front of that just like you would expect a corner to and then picks it off to win the Super Bowl. But the plus side is with all these corners being taught this, um, that you have to be in front of the play, Jim Bob Cooter does a good job at using that against the advantage. And that will take you back to the Colts game. At the very top of the screen, you have Marvin and Amir Abdullah. And you're going to see the corner that's about 10 yards off of Amir at the top of the screen. Once the ball gets snapped, he's going to see the cut in by Amir, and he's going to try and jump in front of that. And Marvin does a good job. He's going to shoot vertical with his rub on this play. And... With that corner trying to jump down in front of the play, he essentially runs himself out of the position as Amir is going to run his quick slant and he's going to stop on a dime and cut back out towards the sideline. And this is how you stop corners that have, you know, are able to beat that, that rub route and get, beat his man to the spot, if you will. Just a quick cut here, Amir's going to get the football, and that's going to be six. So that's pretty much how rub routes work. It's a nice, simple, you can get very creative. You can use three-man bunches, five-man, or four-man bunches, or even just a quick two-man uh, rub route concept. So very simple stuff, but when done effectively with good decision-making, can be deadly, and the Lions use it very effectively.